the thing is, is that uh, you, I often failed. I would like try to make a joke or something and no one laughs and that's okay. You need that kind of under your belt and in your back pocket because the more you go with that and the more you take risks, you kind of develop a bit of a thick skin to kind of failing in front of people. And for me, that was really, really important. All right, real talk. When is the last time that you failed in front of people and we're just like, mm, okay with it? <laughs> well, today on the podcast, we've got Burgundy Drive front person as well as real live radio DJ Ian McGill on the show. And I really hope that both his confidence and enthusiasm rub off on you and me. <laughs> Let's dive in. Hey, Ian McGill. What's up? Welcome to Interaction Presents. This is where we play. How's it going? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I'm so excited to talk to you because like you've been here forever. Like I don't really remember an interaction before you were here, I think. I don't know. When, when did you start? Yeah, well, I started when I was nine. Um, I did a movie makers camp just kind of on a whim. Like I was driving with my mom. And she just asked, she was like, would you want to do a movie makers camp? And me being me, I was like, oh, yeah, because I, I love movies. And, and then, yeah, I, I joined and I had a blast and I, I've been there ever since. I, I begged to do um, a production of Alice in Wonderland because that was happening right after that movie makers camp. So my parents let me do that. And then I then that was my first experience doing theater. Um, and I, I really enjoyed it. And then I begged to do classes in the fall and then I, I did not stop. It went like in the school year, I was doing a class. And then every summer, I don't think I had a summer where I didn't do at least one camp. Like I just didn't stop. Interaction was completely consistent throughout my childhood. So yeah. That's amazing. That's amazing. I like, honestly wish that there had like that I had been an interaction kid. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. You would have been a great interaction kid. Thank you. Like you, you are an interaction that. kid. But... Thank you. <laughs> a child at heart. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we started with Movie Makers and then what role did you play in Alice in Wonderland? Um, I played, I think I was a card and I want to say I was the three of hearts. The I think. Yes, it was it was a really challenging role to take on. I can imagine, very two dimensional. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, my hands were full. But <laughs> so, and then like fast forward, however many years to like Burgundy Drive. How did that happen? Yeah, that was that was really, uh, really crazy. I mean, basically, the four of us, like me, Caleb, Brandon, and Luke we were already playing music together at Interaction doing um, a class with Chuck, I want to say. Maybe Ryan was involved with that one too. And we were jamming one day in the summer because the four of us had a gig coming up. And we realized, we're like, hey, we all really gel because we were already all friends. Like we had hung out before. We had like jammed a little bit. And we realized like maybe we can actually turn this into something. So then we we went to my house one afternoon in the summer and wrote a couple songs then played a gig and from there we just asked chuck we were like hey can we do something and he let us come in once a week um on wednesday nights to jam for a little bit and write as many songs as we could and we wrote a lot most of them uh have not been released nor <laughs> should they ever be but that's, that's okay the way it should be right <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> <laughs> yeah um and yeah and we're we we've now done a lot like we we got to play um in Moncton and Fredericton and we've done an EP and an album and met some really awesome people and yeah it's crazy I mean we're still technically together we just have not done anything since we released our album and August 2020 because the the world and 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 what's happening in the world and we're all in different cities right now with school so but yeah, yeah. but you still released an album like two Augusts ago yeah yeah That's amazing yeah oh my god I can't even okay so yeah it was two 
What a blur. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's all, yeah, it's coming back to me now. I remember yeah. when that happened. Yeah. So like, what do you, what's your role in Burgundy Drive? Tell everybody. Yeah, uh, I'm, I'm the singer um, and uh, co-songwriter. We all, honestly, we don't really have like what, there's no like Paul and John and not comparing ourselves to the Beatles, <laughs> but like, it's not like there's like two main songwriters and one main songwriter. Like it's all very collaborative. Um, so yeah, like singer slash co-co-co songwriter. Yeah. Nice. Nice. I remember there was like, I can't remember what song it was or when it was, but I remember working with you in the second turret one time on your voice for something. And it was just like, I felt like you had this huge breakthrough moment with just like <laughs> being able to open your mouth wider when you were singing <laughs> and it changed everything. Do you remember that? Yeah, I honestly <laughs> do. I remember working with you a lot and my gosh, God bless you, Hillary. Like you had so many good tips. Like, thank you. Uh, yeah. I mean, I just, just I I singing wasn't something I ever really like it wasn't like a passion of mine for a long time like it was just something I kind of did and also did out of necessity doing so much theater like we yeah. had to do some musicals from time to time and eventually I just kind of tried it um really because I, honestly I just really liked a certain Red Hot Chili Pepper song and I was like I want to try singing this and Chuck helped me with it and then I realized I kind of enjoy it and it was a it's it's still a long journey like I don't sing a, a ton right now obviously like there's no concerts for me to do at yeah. the moment but um yeah I mean I'm still always working on it and it took me a long time to feel confident but help having like people like you and also Adam Dinkhorn who produced our album. He was a huge help with me, like, because he would just be very constructive in, in, in his criticism. And he would just stop me when I got too nasally, which is a lot. And um, <laughs> would just, would just say, Hey, let's do another take. And like, he would tell me when he's like, okay, let's take a breather. Let's take five, drink some water uh, and, and all that jazz. So it was a weird experience becoming a, a, a singer in a, a rock band, but uh, you know, it, it happened, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, pretty fun, right? <laughs> oh yeah. So much fun. So much fun. It's kind of like the best feeling. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it was, and it's weird too, because like I always, I, at first I really, the thing that scared me the most about our concerts was I was the front man so I was the one who had to banter with the audience and yeah I was so terrified of that for the first long while like I just didn't feel confident in that whatsoever I never knew what to say um I, and I just I, I it got a little bit better as it went along because I guess I just started feeling more open and I was like I should just really try to let my personality show a little bit and um it's so weird that that used to be a big fear of mine because like now I do that kind of for a living. Like I, I talk on the radio and stuff. Yeah, and I know. I was going to talk about that next. Cause like, okay, so now you're on the radio, you've got your radio show. Yeah. Ian, you're killing it. You're killing I, it. I, I mean, I hope so. I'm trying, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, yeah, that actually happened kind of thanks to interaction, shout out, <laughs> because um, just literally through connections, um, because Lauren Dykeman, shout out to Lauren, amazing, we love her, um, she, uh, her mom uh, used to work for uh, Katie Broadcasting, which is the radio company I work for, they're uh, 97.3 The Wave in Country 94, and she was the music director at Country 94, and so she asked Lauren, she was like, do you know anyone who would maybe be interested in applying for um, an announcer uh, position? And just basically anyone who's like, okay with talking, like that's the important thing. They don't need experience. They just need to be okay with just talking. And so she messaged me because we're friends and uh, I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll apply for that. Didn't think it would ever happen. Um, and I ended up getting the position and I've been doing it for uh, about three and a half years now. And it was, that was crazy. Like I think about 
um, when I started out, like, I just never knew what to say. So I was basically ap- apologies to anyone who listened to country 94 when I started, because <laughs> I was literally so boring. I was just reading like the events page and stuff on the website, just basically that. And occasionally saying, I like the song. Here it is. Here's Chris Stapleton. But like, I guess as I got going longer and longer, I, I felt like, oh, maybe I could try talking about this thing. And like, again, like kind of showing a little bit of personality. And um, honestly, thank goodness I did theater and I did some some front man work bantering with the crowd because like that, what I learned from that really has helped me the most in talking on the radio. So, and and also it wouldn't have happened if I didn't come to interaction and, and make friends and stuff. So it's it's pretty wild. Interaction, I, I owe a lot. It, if I ever win the lottery, I need to donate some money to, to the school. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. Hope you do. Hope you do. Uh, fingers um, crossed. But... Fingers crossed. That's like, uh, it just makes me so happy. I, I've been talking to lots of alumni lately, and it seems like everyone is just really grateful for the confidence that they have because of their oh, yeah. experience and interaction. And yeah, it with like myself as an artist and like as a mom and teacher and human being, like I have learned a lot about self confidence in the last year and a half, and it's hard work. So yeah, like, do you want to like let people in a little bit on like what the building blocks are for creating self confidence, like interaction style? Oh man, that's a great question interaction style um (laughs) yeah i think just i I don't even it's it's oh man because it was such a long journey but i I, (laughs) yeah yeah literally like i guess self-confidence kind of came for me just having that practice of just throwing myself on stage like if we are playing an improv game not being afraid to just jump out there and the thing is is that uh, you I often failed I would like try to make a joke or something and no one laughs and that's okay you need that kind of under your belt and in your back pocket because the more you go with that and the more you take risks you kind of develop a bit of a thick skin to kind of failing in front of people and for me that was really really important and that but also just kind of like I got to do so many shows throughout my childhood at interaction. So I just became more and more comfortable in front of people. And I'm not always comfortable. That's the thing. Like sometimes I'll do a show and I'm really nervous for whatever reason. And despite that, I'm just, I, I still feel somewhat confident because I know like, Hey, I grew up trying to do this and having fun doing it. So let's have more fun. And I guess that really like having fun and developing that thick skin to failing in front of people has kind of helped me be self-confident. If if that makes sense. That's like 100% the most perfect answer I could have hoped for. (laughs) (laughs) Well, well, thank you. (laughs) But for real, like you really hit it on the head because like so much of our ability to take risks is the ability to like talk ourselves through the risk-taking process like in your head and be able Mm. to like you know like self-soothe that like inner child or whatever you know who's like oh but I'm gonna suck or people are gonna think I'm dumb or blah 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 like yeah it's the same voice like I'm pretty sure for your whole life I don't know like I'm 34 and I'm still saying stupid things to myself in my head (laughs) I'm really working on not saying them anymore you know but right right I think when you have that consistent practice of having to, like you said, just have the opportunity to fail in front of people, Mm -hmm. that sets you up for just being so fearless in the world and just like taking opportunities as they come and trusting yourself to just be able to handle it. Yeah, absolutely. And it also helped me like, because I, I, I started really like enjoying acting and doing theater and, and, and performing in front of people at, I, I don't remember exactly how old I was 
that's when I realized like I enjoy that. Like, cause for the first long wild interaction, I just enjoyed playing the games and, and hanging out with friends and stuff. And then sort of fell into like, Oh, I actually enjoy acting and, and performing and, and all that. And yeah. So I think like having that under my belt, um, especially as I hit like high school, it also kind of helped me like in school, like doing tests and exams and essays and stuff, because I knew like, I'm like, I have like actually messed up in front of 50 people at the sanctuary theater. Cause I forgot a line or something or whatever. And it's like, if I can do that in front of 50 people, I can make a mistake on a test and be okay. So it really is a skill and it's so transferable. So that's that's kind of why I'm really grateful that I did so much theater growing up is that like it's not, not even just that I, I'm not scared to fail in front of people. I know I'm not scared to fail like just in general, like it's it's OK. It happens to everyone and you just have to learn how to pick yourself up. Yeah, that's a. I got nothing to say. That was so great. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what I want to know is like what your daily creative practice kind of looks like. Oh man, that's a great question. Um, yeah, I mean, right now, like it what's well, so different now, I guess, because since the the pandemic started, like everything kind of changed because before that, I was trying to go out as much as possible and watch art like in person, like go to see concerts, go to see uh, plays, go to see movies in the theater and all that stuff. And now, you know, you can't really do that as much. So now I'm like really heavily into watching movies. And um, I, I've always been a, a movie fan anyway. And it's just grown and grown and grown. And I've also started trying to do things differently. Like since, you know, we have more time at home now, um, I'm trying to force myself to read more. So like, I, I literally like, I can't show, I guess, but like my book, uh, my, my mic and computer is like, like resting on acting books right now um <laughs> just to keep it keep it interaction style um but yeah no and I'm I'm trying to write more too I I've started trying to do that because um you know like sometimes it's like oh I really want to do a show right now but I don't have a script to analyze and it's like hey maybe I'll try writing something and or maybe not even writing a script but I'll like try to who is like I'll try to make up a character in my mind and I'll be like okay I'm gonna spend 15 minutes like talking basically to myself in my room like a crazy person just like trying to act and try to like come up with a character and just kind of trying to adapt that way where it's like we we have obviously so many resources like on the internet and everything but um where I can't like go out and like see the art I'm like I really want to try and like do as much as I can kind of independently at home because I um, even though I can't like rehearse a show, it's like I can still practice acting. And, and that's something that I've I've always tried to do, but like especially where I'm home now. So that was a really long, weird answer. No, but like, <laughs> no, like OK, so how old are you again? Ian? Uh, I just turned 22. Just turned 22. OK, like so much wisdom just came out of your mouth. Like, can you tell me where your like urge to like actually follow through on these like desires comes from? Yeah. I mean, well, number one, I think I just get enjoyment out of it. Um, you know, it's, it's a really pleasurable experience for me, like trying to, um, you know, act and stuff and to, to watch movies and to try and, and see if I can write a, a movie and stuff. Um, that's just like what I'm the most passionate about as like um, something to do. Like, I just love doing it. So, um, you know, like, I, I don't know if I do all of that every day. I definitely don't write every day. And I, I, I try to watch a movie every day, but it certainly doesn't happen. Like life gets yeah. in the way and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really just like, I just, that's what I like to do. Like, it's like some people like to, play golf and knit and for me it's like that's that's just my thing that like I feel like I need to do it because I love it and it's also it's 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 kind of like a really great way to kind of escape from the reality of you know if you're, you're stressed about something or school is a lot like being able to take some time and do that just really helps it's it's therapeutic so 
That's like, yeah. I love that you categorize like watching a movie as part of your creative practice. Because <laughs> yeah. sometimes I'm like, from the outside, people must just think that I waste a lot of time watching RuPaul <laughs> Drag Race, but it is like part of my creative practice because yes. I'm trying to like rain that much energy into my body and it takes like oh a my gosh inspiration to get there <laughs> a thousand percent they, that's actually a great show to watch I've only seen one season of it but oh, like le- legitimately so you can learn yeah it's so good and like they, those are like you want to talk about like committed artists they, they all are so hard so- to work yeah, they work so hard and are so entertaining. So yeah. shout out to all the drag queens and, and <laughs> anyone who's involved in, in RuPaul's Drag Race. It's like legitimately awesome. I know. The thing that I'm always really like astounded by is the acting challenges and just like mm. the way that they're able to like think on their feet and infuse their character and like have like mm. whatever comedy and also like care like impersonating other people like it's basically everything that you're (laughs) talking about you know it's and all of that comes from that like inner kind of like I got this self-confidence like I got this and I enjoy it there you go yeah absolutely yeah yeah okay so we talked about acting we talked about burgundy drive we talked about your radio show what's next for you what's next yeah, I mean, well, definitely uh, becoming a teacher because um, a year from now I'll be starting my practicum. Uh, so that's bonkers to think about and a little <laughs> bit scary in all honesty. But um, yeah, that's the next big thing that I have coming and I'm, I'm really excited for it. I, I can't wait, but it's, uh, it's a little nerve wracking too. Um, so that's really the only thing. I mean, hopefully I can do something with some kind of writing at some point. I said, that's a, definitely, it's a goal of mine. I just don't have a, I don't have like one thing. I'm like, Oh yeah, this is my story. This is my whatever short film I want to make, but it's definitely a goal like long-term to do something with that. I'm just not sure yet. So I, I guess that's what's, what's coming next eventually. <laughs> Cool. I'm really excited to see it, <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> you know, and like, let me know. Cause like, I, you know, I'd love to help in whatever way I can, you know? For, yeah. Well, I mean, thank you. Here, yeah. still here for you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I didn't know that the lesson that we were going to learn today was how to fail better, but it is definitely something that I'm sure we could all improve on. So, you know, Let's just recall that failure is the stairway to success. (laughs) Talk to you next week.